So what you need to do is to click on After Effects and then when After Effects comes up you're going to get this window here and it says New Composition or New Composition from Footage. And so what I want is to go into Apple Face, do Winged Man Green and it comes out to 20 seconds. What you see here in After Effects, this is your timeline. This is where you put all of your files that you're working on. And this is your bin here um, with all of your, there's your composition. It's called Winged Green. And there's one JPEG. And what you want to do is to drag in all the other JPEGs that you need. So there's going to be my background image, the left wings, right wings, screenshot. You can bring them all in really in case you want to work on something else. And here you can order the size of your image. So you can just do to fit. You want to give yourself lots of room down here so that you, uh, once you start putting your layers in, then you have a great deal of space. Now I put that just in as a space holder. Actually, I want to get rid of that one and put in just the winged man without the wings on it because we're going to put the wings on separately. And then you want to put a background in there. That's going to be our background. And you put it under winged man. There's your winged man. And then you're going to get rid of that background. And then on top of there, you're going to drop left wing. You can see you want it to come above the other wings there with the other figure and then you're on top of that you're going to put right wing it doesn't really matter which one you, that you put on top so now you need to actually get rid of the green right here so here you have all of your your layers uh, but you can't see them unless you actually click there's a little eye icon here so you can make one disappear or come back again you can make them both disappear and then you see the figure or you can make all three disappear and then you see the background. So what you need to do is now is you have to go into effects and presets and we want keying. So you click on the little key icon there and you open it up and you go to color range. So click on color range and then drag it across here and you're going to get this triangle. Kind of drop, drop it in the middle there and then you're going to get the screen here comes up and you can either use the eyedropper tool that's just normal click on it and drag it in here and you'll see that actually the second one appears because you've actually used the green screen to get rid of that one and we don't really need to because the green screen was really perfect we don't really need any adjustments but you can actually adjust these here you can actually adjust the fuzziness back and forth so eventually one of them disappears or it doesn't so you can if it doesn't come out properly you move these little toggles back and forth but because it's a really good green screen it was easy to make it disappear and then you want to get rid of the green screen on the under layer so you have to click on it left wing so what you want to do when um, to do the second one you have to delete the first you don't delete it just hide it make sure you highlight it then you see there's the second wing and you see when you first apply that some of it disappears but then you want your medium eye dropper again not the plus or the minus drag it on there and then you see the figure dis uh, appears now you want to hide that one also click on unwinged man then bring color range into there and again the same thing take that eye dropper get rid of it so there it's sort of around the figure. You see there's a little bit of green around the edges. Now, one thing you could do, you could actually use the stronger one. Let's just erase that. Bring color range in there. And you could get the one that says plus. And that actually does a better job of getting rid of everything in there. And again, you can always adjust it to a certain degree so that you get your optimum amount of disappearance. And then we're going to make this figure <coughs> fly on top of there. Okay, there's a few little bits of green there, so you may need to uh, go back into this one and toggle it so that 
some of that green disappears and same as the top one there we go now we've got our figure so now you want to animate these so here's your we're just going to do 20 seconds worth there's your cursor and that will drag along what you've actually done so you need to kind of jump back and forth between these wings so you're first going to click on right wing and there's something up here you got your tools and there's a little pin tool here puppet position pin tool and I want you to click on that oh yeah I gotta start on the right wing so you put these pinpoints and if we just take these two pinpoints right here and then I take the pointer tool you can move this like that or if I want I could move it like this around that pivot now the one thing is I don't want this wing here to move so what you can do is you can anchor it a little bit and put another pin couple of them right there and then you see actually it will make it stationary but what you really want it to do is pivot around here so you put one more pin in there and now if you bring it around it'll pivot like that now you notice that bends a little bit so you want to put another type of pin between these it's called the starch pin and you go into the pins right here the puppet pin tool you hold on it for a bit and then you get puppet starch pin tool and you put some starch in there and then if you took this and you bend it it makes it a little bit stiffer now if you just want your wings to flap up and down you wouldn't have that middle piece there but uh, that way you can articulate it a little bit more so what I'll do next is I'll close this and click on the left wing get the pin tool puppet pin one there and there one there and a couple here and then we go on to the figure now what we want to do is we want to put pins also on the arm and the legs and this arm we can't really do it because it's attached to the leg right here it's not free so it'll actually just kind of bend it and then in the head and one pin there one there one there we can put one here won't really use it and then a couple on the hips the shoulders the neck so that way we can move the head back and forth another one here these these two so you want the hips to swivel a bit and then right behind the knees and then you could put one or two here doesn't matter we'll start with one but you want to put all the pins in at the beginning if you start moving the figure a little bit it's not going to work too well and then you have to animate these kind of one at a time now it takes a little bit of time to do all this and uh, we're not going to worry too much about what the animation looks like so you start with your right wing and once you put all those pins in place you'll have key a keyframe right here now let's move it ahead two frames and then touch the pin tool not on the wing otherwise you make a new one and sort of click on those pin points and drag it down then you go to the left wing do the same thing and if you want you could go to the unwinged man and you could just make the head bob a little bit like that and if you want one leg to just kind of stick out a little bit you could the hand move slightly and then you'll see it, when you move from the beginning to there you'll get that move now you can move a little bit further and just keep doing the same thing see if you pull on this one though you'll kind of pull the hip out that's because there's no separation there well you could stick the elbow out a little bit and then maybe move the head back this way so you just continue all the way so this one I didn't put the starch pins in so you'll see the animation will be a little bit different and I didn't put the starch pins in the figure now if you want to kind of lift the leg up and make it look fairly real what you do is you kind of drag up the knee and then you drag up the foot like that and then it'll look like it's walking and then you could drag this down a little bit like that and make this one look like it steps up so you can first if you want you could just work on the legs back and forth and then go back and do the wings give it a little extra twist so now you can see the legs jumping up and down 
And again, you could just do one wing at a time if you really like. And maybe here, though, you could still have the arm flashing in and out. Or if you wanted the hand to come up like that. See? So these things become quite elastic. So now we're going to do each wing at a time. So if you want, you could actually make the wings beat fairly quickly. Like he's running to take off. And you can start getting a little bit. Now you could switch to the other wing here and do the same thing. And then you just kind of mimic it. And at the very end, you could just curl them in. And then you can watch the animation. It takes some time to actually render. So that's essentially how you animate with After Effects. See the animation itself. Now, I wasn't very careful with this. It's just going to keep repeating. And you can see it's kind of hovering over the landscape there, having wings. And you can see with some of the uh, green screening, uh, it was a little bit too strong. So some of it disappeared, but that's easy to adjust. You may like it like that, but if, uh, if you want it to move around on a different background, probably the best thing to do is to put it in, make a green screen, and then in Premiere or in DaVinci, you could actually then take that figure and have it move through a different space. You could also do it on After Effects, but I'm going to show you how to take this and work with it on Premiere. So I also loaded a green screen here. And you can put that either above the other background or just, or you could put it below it and then just blank out this one. Anyways, now you could actually export it like this. Another new composition. This again is After Effects. There's our bin, our effect controls. And here's uh, where we put all of our clips to go in the timeline. And this is the timeline. So I'm going to start with a new composition from footage. And we're going to go down to Apple Phase 2 and start with Pumpkin. And again, we've got 20 seconds. And then I also want to bring in the blue underface. Now, you could actually, I with this one, I could have actually taken away um, part of the mouth and then put the tongue underneath you could do several layers But I think two layers is enough here and then we'll put that underneath this one here and Then all we need to do is click on the pumpkin JPEG we go into effects and presets keying color range and then drag this over top and then again you need to take the uh, the eyedropper and drop it right on that color and then you can see they've disappeared and then you just see the face underneath and you click on this and we might want to bring up the fuzziness so it gets rid of any other green around there okay now we're ready to animate there's our project okay so now we're going to work again with the pen tool and we might want to zoom in because we don't really need the rest of it well that's a little bit too far And we want to actually use the pen tool on um, both layers. So we'll first click on the pumpkin layer. And you want to kind of draw pins all around it so that when you move parts of the face, it doesn't move the whole apple. And then we want some on the eyebrows because we want the eyebrows to move. And then along the mouth and then along the eyelids and then you could put a couple on the nose if you want to move that around a little bit maybe pull the cheeks out okay now we can start to animate so we've already got those key frames in place and you could go to the end there and if you want an end point oh. so now we're going to start 
animating this. But one thing that we could do is we could take actually the beginning point, copy and paste it onto the end point. So this takes a little bit of work. What you need to do is press the letter U and it actually uncovers all of the different pins. So you need to highlight all of them. There's a lot of them. And then you just do copy and then bring the thing all the way out here and paste. So it fixes it in place. So when you get to the end, it'll revert back to normal. Okay, now we can close this again. We don't need all those. So now you can just move this forward and you start to animate. And then you just start, maybe you can make it wink. So it's a little bit of a slow process, but it's still faster actually than stop action. And then we can kind of raise this eyebrow here. And then you can open the eyeball back up. And actually, if you want, you could also, we'll go back to the beginning here, and we'll go to the blue underface. And if you want, you could also animate that. Like, for example, if you want to kind of drag the eyeball around or something, maybe put some on the teeth, if you want to kind of drag it in and out. And if you want to maybe stretch that eyeball out. There you go. So we've got one little wink there. Then maybe we'll do another little wink. Now it seems like it takes quite a while, but actually, in terms of animation, it's not really that long. Now, if you want more refined movements, you just kind of put more pins in there. But you have to do that at the beginning. Maybe stretch that a bit. So I'm just going to do random face movements. Maybe get the nose to kind of turn a bit. And then if you want to make the mouth underneath get a little bit bigger there, you could kind of drag these out. And again, if you want the eyeballs to kind of turn one way, Turn the back of it. Maybe make this one a little bit bigger. And then you could even make the eye underneath a little bit bigger. And then make the eyebrow go up a bit. Okay. So there you can see the different animations on that face. So I'm going to just... Uh, there's a couple other pin... pin, pin tools you can use and there's the puppet bend tool which is kind of an interesting one you can actually kind of twist things or if I let's say want to put it by this eyebrow here I go back and we twist this a little bit and twist it the other way it's just kind of subtle and the fact that we've done so much already it won't move too much and then maybe make him frown a little bit. And then you can see the mouth underneath there needs to change a little bit in shape too. So that is just a few little facial movements I've made. I've been working on it for just a few minutes. And now I could also export this one. Here we are back in After Effects, and I want to bring that entire piece in here as a folder. So we drag it in there, Enable Layer Styles, Composition, Retain Layer Sizes, and then you just click OK. And then here you have all the layers. Now you could just take these and drag them into here. Now what you want to do is bring the blue to the bottom, and then bring the apple second to the bottom and then here's all of your parts so that's one eyebrow four is the second eyebrow layer one is the mouth layer two is one eyeball layer three 
is the other eyeball. Now you can actually start playing around with the pins and things like that. I'll put maybe two or three pins in each one. So we'll click on layer five. It's that one. And then, uh, and then in four, the same thing. And then in three. And then in two. And then, of course, in the mouth. Now, of course, you could make these a lot more complex, but this is just to show you how to do it. So we'll start here and then we'll just uh, we'll work on each piece at a time and then eventually bring them all together. So you can make the mouth go sad and you can make it go happy. You can move it a little bit. And then we can even put some of those different pins on, like the Puppet Ben tool. So you can kind of twist a little bit. Now bring that back and we'll... And if you actually want to move it a little bit... You can change the position also, and you can make keyframes in there. Well, here we need the uh, this tool. You can move it a bit, then move it that way, move it that way. You can do a little bit of rotation. Change the position, and then maybe rotate a little bit change the position back again maybe change the scale rotate it again so this is all under transform you can even make it fade out there you go so those are all the different things you can do in transform now we'll close that and close this one and now we're going to work with layer two which would be one of the eyeballs i'll get our puppet pin tool again so that's going to be a little bit of a sad eye Okay, now let's do the next eye. So you might want to kind of mimic that a little bit. And then, of course, the eyebrows. And then, of course, the last eyebrow. And then just on that last eyebrow, I'm going to go into transform and just work with the position, scale, rotation, and opacity. We could change the position a little bit, change it back, or maybe up. Play a little bit with the scale here, change the scale down. And right here, I want to make sure in both position and rotation, I click that. And then what I'm going to do is, with rotation, I'm going to make it spin around a number of times. And then also move off. So there you go. There's a little animation just from small parts if you want. 